the starting gun has been fired in the race for the Labour leadership. The contest formally gets underway today with six candidates already in the running to replace Jeremy Corbyn and a similar number now set to fight it out for the deputy leadership. The latest entrant in that particular race is Scotland's sole surviving Labour MP Ian Murray who joins me now. Morning to you. Uh, good morning, Hayley. So what would you bring to the role of deputy leader then? Well, what my pitch is is to really do four things. It's to try and find a way of listening to the public and responding to that. It's about looking at the policy of the party and trying to change the policies of the party to be more responsive to what the public are looking for. Um, and it's about a break from the past and looking to the future. Uh, and I think with my track record of being able to win and build broad, broad coalitions of support, um, that a, a deputy leadership role at the UK Labour Party would be something where I'm able to bring the party together in an organisational way, but also in a policy way. So when you say a break from the past, do you mean a break from uh, Jeremy Corbyn's uh, style of leadership and indeed the policies that he has presented? Pursued. Well, I think what we need out of this uh, election campaign for both leader and deputy leader is not just a new voice and a new face, but a new direction. Um, the public were very clear at the election back on the 12th of December that they rejected both the leadership and the way that that was operating and also the policy platform that it was operating on. So I think the party has to reflect at the moment on whether or not it wants to be a credible alternative government of the future or whether it wants to be a protest party of the past. And I certainly want the former in order that we can get back into power and do what we've done so well in the past, and that's lift millions of people out of poverty and transform the country. And which of the contenders for leader are you backing? Well, I don't think it's right for the deputy leadership candidates to be backing a, a particular leader because the deputy leader will have to work with anyone um, that is put in place. But it's quite clear that we don't need a continuity candidate. What we do need uh, is someone who can bring fresh ideas and a fresh approach because, uh, as I've already said, uh, a new face and a new voice but the same direction is something that the party should be rejecting. So you retweeted Jess Phillips' uh, campaign launch video. Does that suggest that, you, you, that she is someone that you could work with? Well, actually, I've been supporting all the uh, candidates that I think that can bring that fresh approach and giving them advice on what they need to do in Scotland and what their uh, approach to Scotland must be. I think Jess Phillips' video really uh, cut through with what she was trying to, to say. I also think Keir Starmer's video was very good. And I'm a 2010 intaker with Lisa and Andy, who I think is also uh, a good uh, prospect for the future of the Labour Party. So this is about having a proper debate uh, about the direction of the Labour Party and where it should go. And I think the leadership candidates will be addressing some of those big questions questions over the course of the next three months and I hope that Labour Party members respond positively to them. And you should know better than, than many of your Westminster colleagues uh, about the issues in Scotland, particularly, uh, particularly around another independence referendum. Where do you stand on that? Is that something, uh, given the mandate that the SNP really got in, in the general election, and if they do well uh, at, at the next Scottish parliamentary elections, is that something you think uh, you know, the Labour Party should entertain? Well, firstly, I think we should dispel the myth that the SNP got a mandate for a second independence referendum at the general election. 54% of the Scottish public voted for parties that are overtly pro-United Kingdom. So let's not uh, uh, have the same narrative as the SNP that they are, have a mandate for going forward for a, a second independence well, Five referendum. years down the and line, the SNP... 20... You, I mean, look, look at the, the general election results. You, can, can, are, you, are you denying that that is a, a groundswell, again, of opinion behind uh, the SNP and, and behind its main policy, really, of independence? Well, I think I've seen the SNP bus that said stop Brexit on the side and lock Boris Johnson out of Downing Street on the back and certainly all of their leaflets that came through my door in South Edinburgh said exactly the same thing. There was actually no mention of independence at all in some of the leaflets that I read during the general election campaign. So if the SNP yeah, wants a mandate for... they were fighting for... the campaign on that. Well, so, but uh, therefore, where does the mandate come from if 54% of the public uh, voted for pro-UK parties? You can't argue one side um, because it suits the argument, but okay, not argue well, the other. Well, where, where do you stand on it in the future? I mean, where do you stand on, on the future? Are you, are you saying that you w would not entertain support for a second independence referendum at any cost? I think when we get to the 2021 Scottish election campaign, if the SNP are looking to seek a mandate for the second independence referendum, then they should be explicit about that. But we'll be doing everything in our power from the Labour Party's perspective uh, to win that election and to prevent the SNP from having that majority in the Scottish Parliament. Look, we need to be and, talking and about that the SNP's you, record. Will that win we spend you back support, time. do you think, uh, within Labour voters in Scotland? 
Well, I think it's about time that we were principled about issues rather than deciding whether or not the latest opinion poll or focus group tells us to go in one way or the other. That's what's wrong with politics in this country at the moment. It's broken on the basis that politicians are no longer principled. The principled argument from the Labour Party has always been that we are against the UK breaking up. We believe in devolution and we're taking devolution forward and always have taken devolution forward. And that's a principled position that we should take. We believe that Scotland's place in the UK is a benefit of Scotland and for the benefit of the rest of the United Kingdom. And that's the arguments that we should be having. And did Jeremy Corbyn's uh, very ambiguous policy, indeed, he seemed to, to go against uh, the wishes of Scottish Labour on a, a second independence referendum, did that destroy uh, Labour's vote in Scotland? Well, I think on the two biggest constitutional issues of the day, on both Brexit and on uh, Scottish independence, the uh, UK Labour Party leadership were not clear on where they stood. And it's, it's very clear, and I've repeated this on a number of occasions, that if you stand in the middle of the road, you get knocked down by a car. You have to be very principled about these issues. And we are principally uh, a pro-European party and principally a pro-United Kingdom party. And let's make those principal arguments. We're not going to agree with everyone. Uh, the politics In politics, you shouldn't be agreeing with everyone. We should have that debate, have that discussion, have that decision uh, and try and win the argument through the power of debate and what's in the best interest and national interest of the country. And if the Labour Party after these uh, leadership elections uh, moves uh, away from the direction that Jeremy Corbyn's been taking it and let's say that, that you are indeed successful in, in your campaign for deputy leadership, uh, could you work with Richard Leonard uh, as leader of the Scottish Labour Party? I work with Richard Leonard uh, at the moment, and that would certainly uh, continue. And I would hope that the Scottish Labour Party and the UK Labour Party would be uh, much easier to work together and have a much closer relationship with a deputy leader who's based in Scotland, who's a Scottish Labour MP, and who understands the constitutional elements of not just Scotland, but right across the United Kingdom.